Welcome to Naresh ID and uh, today we are going to have another session on uh, verbal ability and the section is reading comprehension. So, reading comprehension or otherwise known as RC. So, I think you all are very familiar with it and uh, many of us dread attempting this session because I think the reason is because it requires a lot of thinking and uh, we have very limited time for that. So, what we have to do here is we are just going to talk about a few tips which if we consider and if we try to excel in, we will be able to solve this section of the verbal ability very easily. First of all, please be informed that whenever we are uh, attempting uh, reading comprehension, do not think that if you are a good reader or you are an active reader, then only you can solve this section effectively. No, that is not the case. Here, it is more about understanding. So, reading comprehension deals with understanding the passage which is in front of you. So, first of all when you start reading the passage do not rush yourself. So, we think we do not have time at our end. So, we try to read fast and in that reading fast we do not understand what we are reading. So, it is like we want to finish the passage as quickly as possible without understanding. So, that is the first mistake we are making. So, here you can start on a very slow note, but do not be so slow that you are trying to understand each and every part of the sentence or each and every sentence in that passage. No, that is not the right thing to do. So, here you, you do not have to rush, but read at your own pace, but understand what you are reading. And the next one is read all the questions first. Now, if you remember when you were at school or college, whenever you did reading comprehension passages, your teacher always told you read the passage once, read the passage twice and we always did that, even I followed that. But now here when we solve this section in the verbal edit ability test of companies, do we have the time to read the passage twice? No, definitely not because if we do that, we will miss out on the other sections. The time is not at our end. So, here what you are going to do is you are going to read the questions first. So, when you are reading the questions, again understanding is very important. You understand the question that is asked. So, when you understand, then at the time of reading the passage, you know ok, for this particular question, I have my answer here. So, here uh, and it is I would suggest it is always better you have a pencil with you. So, that when you are going through the passage, you make a mark or you bracket the answers there. So, you know for this particular question, this is my answer. And yes, one more thing that we do is uh, we have a misconception or we have been doing that right uh, since our childhood or our school days that when we talk about the first question, we look for the answer in the first paragraph, second question probably in this first or the second paragraph. Now, please do not do that. Here they are trying to trick you. So, your answer can be in any part of the passage. So, uh, the answer to question number 5 can lie in first uh, paragraph or the answer to question number 1 can lie in fifth paragraph. So, please do not get uh, the wrong opinion that if you are attempting the first question, the answer has to be in the first passage uh, paragraph that is wrong. Then the next one is read actively. Now, what do you mean by read actively? We all read, how much of it do we remember? Now, for example, if I read a novel, do I remember each and every page of the novel that I read? Definitely not, I do not have that good memory. But here when I mean read actively, we mean we should actually understand what we are reading. So, it is not again that uh, we read the entire thing and when I ask you what did you read and you are in not a position to say ok, I do not remember, obviously that is going to happen. What you have to do here is whatever you read, understand that and in a way you have to anticipate ok, when, when I read this, that means, I can think that this is going to happen in the next passage or the next paragraph. So, this is all about reading actively. So, you have to be more of an active reader than a passive reader. The next is make notes. Now, this is very important because if you feel, if you have a pencil uh, with you and you can always use that, make notes of what you think uh, the author is trying to tell you in the comprehension. Is it like uh, got to do with the general issue or has it got to do with something about sports? Because the topics can be varied, they will not talk you, uh, give a comprehension on a particular topic. So, it is all about current affairs or how it is diverse knowledge that they share here. So, try to make notes of whatever you are doing, 
and it becomes easier for you and again that creates better understanding. Then the next one is very important one is don't try to memorize whatever you are reading. That is the biggest mistake that everybody makes. So what we do is the two things that we do first is try to memorize it and the other thing is try to translate that into our mother tongue. Now that is a big no from me because if you are going to do that you are going to waste your time and energy because you do not have that much of time and the first thing is do not memorize it. Understand be an active reader understand what you are reading because by then you know what the idea is in the passage and it becomes easier for you to comprehend. Then the next one is get the overview. Now how do we know like you know how to get the overview for example you have a very large passage say it is running up to two or three paragraphs and uh, how can you get an overview there. So what you do is when you are reading try to ask this question to yourself what is the passage conveying what is it telling us like is it got to do with the general idea or is it a specific issue that is being talked about or does it want to know your opinion what you think about something. So if you get an overview of what the passage is it becomes easier for you to understand. And the other question that you can ask is how does each paragraph contribute to the passage. So it is like what is the message conveyed in each paragraph what is the first paragraph telling you about what is the second paragraph telling you about and vice versa. So here if you try to relate to each and every paragraph in the reading comprehension then it becomes easier for you that yes the author wants me to know this or the author is trying to tell this. So here getting the overview of the passage is very important because that creates an understanding that yes I am able to understand whatever is written there or whatever I am reading. So now after this we will go on to the next few points those are the general tips that we have for attempting reading comprehension. Now I am going to share with you a few general tips which if you follow regularly then you are definitely going to improve on the reading comprehension skills. Now the fact is I think everybody knows and even you would agree with me those people who have the habit of reading actually do well in RC tests than those who do not. So here I am not saying those who do not cannot solve RC yes you can but only thing is there will be a difference where they those into the habit of reading solve it more quicker and again they have a better understanding whereas for those uh, who do not they do not have a better understanding and at the same time they are unfamiliar they are not familiar like with what is going on or what is the passage in front of them. So these are the general tips that I am giving you and uh, please follow this and it makes it easier for you to attempt reading comprehensions. The first one is read for at least 30 minutes a day. So when I say this now you have to make it as a habit. Now I know you all are very busy and you say where do I get 30 minutes from alright not 30 minutes start with 15 minutes gradually you have to increase the time from 15 to 30 minutes but at least give it a start and get into the habit of reading. So make it as your routine that yes I am going to read something or the other for at least 15 minutes and definitely once you develop the habit of reading you are going to extend your timing and you will not know that you will go on reading for hours without realizing how much time has passed. So here you have to motivate yourself to say like if I read that is definitely going to improve my reading skills as well as I am going to be familiar with the passage that I am reading. So 30 minutes a day is going to improve your reading. The next is read from a variety of sources. Now you may think ok I, I am a college student I am doing a lot of courses so here now the course material. So many people think like you know ok yeah I read my course books so I am reading 30 minutes not 30 minutes I am actually reading for 1 hour 2 hours a day no that is not the concept here. So when we say a variety of sources so that can include your course material it is one of it but not everything. So you can have it from for example newspapers or you can say the internet or you can read from magazines, journals, any pamphlets that you come across. So it can be a variety of sources but you have to see to it you are not restricting your information to one particular source that is if you want to read news you are only following the newspaper no do it somewhere else like you know read it on the internet you can do that and nowadays all of us have good access to the internet and it is a hub of many things so why not use it in the right way. Next is read across a broad range of topics. Now why I am saying this is because 
we usually like to read what we are interested in. For example, some people write, uh, like reading novels. So, they will just stick to reading novels. Now, what happens? People do not like articles. They don't like reading articles or they don't like uh, reading biographies or anything like that. But here when I say broad range of topics, so here you can be for example, if you are a sports lover, don't restrict yourself just to sports news or sports articles. Now have a variety of uh, topics uh, available like sports, you can have cinema, you can have art and architecture, you can have biographies. So here if you are talking about it, then you will know because the input for all these topics is different because the kind of words or vocabulary that you have in a sports topic would not be there in a general topic or in a political topic. So here that is why the broad range of topics helps you in analyzing the different vocabularies used for different formats. Okay. Next is again as I said read actively. You have to understand what you are reading or in other words you have to anticipate what is going to come next. It is not that only after you read you think okay yeah this is it. When you read you should know okay yes I already knew this was coming. So that is what reading does to you and that is what 30 minutes of reading a day does to you. Once you get into the habit of reading there is nothing stopping you believe me. Last is always summarize. Many of us do not do this and that is where we are lacking. What we need to do here is for example start with the novel right. Now you read the first two pages of the novel. Now what you do is okay you read you close your book and then you go off to sleep. But is that the right thing to do? Initial readers okay fine if you are into the habit of reading you can do that. But initially if that is the first time you have got into the habit of reading what you have to do is try to summarize in your own words what those two uh, pages mean or what are you trying to comprehend from those two pages. So that gives you a better understanding and you know yes uh, this has been told in these two pages and I am able to uh, convey that or uh, change that into my own words. So that is why you need to summarize the information whatever you are re reading wherever you are reading. Okay. Now I have a few more tips to tell you I will continue after this. The next four tips that we have are very important and uh, very interesting as well. So how do you deal with long RC passages? Basically people do not like reading and or they do not really fancy reading. So what happens is whenever they come across long RC passages they dread the thought and they just keep it aside and you know they do not take it seriously to answer those questions. But do you think that is the right thing to do? Definitely not because here you are losing out on your marks and definitely not scoring where you can easily score. So how to do deal with long RC passages? So for that it is like this point is related. You need to practice. You cannot start all of a sudden and say okay I am going to read a long passage and answer the questions. No because it does not happen overnight. Here you have to time yourself accordingly and get into the habit of practicing it daily. At least do one RC daily. Because when you are doing that, now here it is more about not speed reading, it is about speed comprehending. So here how easily or how quickly you understand that will save you time because here you cannot like even if you read very fast. For example, you have three paragraphs and you read that in one minute. Now is that really doing justice to those paragraphs? No, because you are not understanding whatever you are reading. So here understanding as I always say reading comprehension the word itself says comprehension. So it is comprehending something. So understanding something. So here understand what you are reading and please practice at least once or at least one RC a day. And again when you are doing long RC passages do not take similar subjects or the subjects that are of your interest. Try to take different subjects where it is challenging you to think properly and have a better understanding. So uh, that is why you need to take long RC passages and do not dread because you are uh, getting long RC passages. Here it is only to check whether how well you can understand a given paragraph. The next is as I said practice already practice more of it because they say practice makes a man perfect and here that is what is going to do to you. So the more you practice the more you are going to perfect that section. Next is determine your reading speed. Now how many of us really know what our reading speed is? Definitely not. I have never checked my reading speed. But here it is how to check your reading speed is 
you start a paragraph, okay? You read it for one minute and then stop. And the, the normal pace, like not, not just because you want to have fewer, more number of words in less time, no. The normal pace that you read every time, so read that way. So just stop the timer and see in one minute, count the number of words that you read. Now, for example, in one, uh, one minute, you read 150 words. Now, maintain that speed for at least one week. So what you do is, now you are better equipped with reading. So when you check your speed again, now it shouldn't be one minute increase the number of words. It should be 45 seconds and then you have 150 words. So what you do is, you decrease your duration of time and you increase your number of words. So that is how you identify your reading speed or the number of words that you read in a minute. So uh, usually they say if it's uh, reading, it should be around uh, 150 to 180 to 200 words per minute. And again, if it's speaking, it has to be 180 words per minute. So let's see if we're really following that or if that is our rate of speech. The next is uh, usually solving RCs in computer-based tests. That is what you all undergo whenever you're going to companies to write those verbal ability tests. So in RCs, like you have all these computer-based tests and where time is the limit and you have to do it as quickly as possible. And so that actually really takes your, uh, makes you stressed. What you have to do here is, again, the same rules that we discussed in the first part. That is, read uh, carefully and then you have to uh, not memorize things, but comprehend, read actively. All those are the points that you need to apply for your uh, computer-based test. And here again, RC is all about comprehending what you read. It's not about, people have a misconception, I can read very fast, so I can start, you know, attempting RCs and I can successfully attempt RCs. No, that's not the condition here. Here it is all about comprehending. It's about understanding what you're reading. Now, what only reading does to you is, it makes you understand faster. So if you're a fast reader, you understand faster. If you're a slow reader, you understand slower. That is the only difference that it makes. But it's all about understanding what you're reading and you can definitely crack the RC session. And good luck and uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.